Hello and welcome to my kitchen. In this video I'm going to show you how to make these small buddies that you use for bel or lei papri chat or even just a snack on because they are just simply delicious and they're pretty easy to make too. So let's get cooking. Now for this recipe we're using three different flours. So in a large bowl, we're going to mix one cup or about 150 grams of plain or all-purpose flour. To that, I'm going to add a half a cup or about 75 grams of chapati or roti flour and one tablespoon or about eight grams of chickpea flour or besan. And we're gonna mix these flours together. I'm also going to add one teaspoon of salt and you can adjust that to your taste and one teaspoon of ground cumin seeds and the cumin seeds need to be ground really fine. Then add two tablespoons of oil and mix it in well. Then we're gonna make a medium firm dough using cold water. Now you want to make the dough fairly firm. You definitely don't want it soft, otherwise your puris will be soft. And you don't want it too hard because you want to roll these as thin as possible. So a little bit on the firmer side like puri dough. And uh, then once you're done kneading it, just cover it with a damp cloth or a bowl and let it rest for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now, if you're out of the ground cumin, I'm gonna show you a very quick way of making it at home. And I always like to have it fresh. So I've got some cumin seeds in a bowl here and I'm just gonna pop them into the microwave for about 10 to 20 seconds. And you have to keep an eye on it because what happens with the cumin seeds it, is it really starts heating up from the middle. And if you don't keep an eye on it, what will happen is the middle will burn and the outside will look just like this. So do it like 10 seconds at a time. It's just heated through and that's just perfect. Then once it's roasted in the microwave, we just need to let it cool for a few minutes and then grind it just how you like it. And bam, there you have it. Ground roasted cumin seeds. Now while the dough is resting, we need to get the rest of the equipment ready. So we're gonna fry these buddies. So I've got my curry here with some sunflower oil in it, about an inch deep worth. I've got my slotted spoon, I've got a rolling pin, I've got a fork because we're gonna roll one big roti out and we're gonna prick it because these puddies, you don't want them to rise. So have a fork or some other gadget handy so you can prick the big roti. Now I'm going to use this round shape cutter. I've got various shapes in here. I'm gonna use this round one and this is available on my website. So if you haven't been to my online store, definitely check it out. It's on milhan.com. So this is just over an inch round circle. We're gonna need some oil when we're rolling. We're not gonna use chapati flour or any other flour when we're rolling. So in case it sticks, we're gonna use oil. And finally, we're gonna need a plate or a tray with some paper towels in it. My dough's been resting for a good 15 to 20 minutes and this is how it looks. So I'm gonna give it a quick knead. And you'll definitely notice that the texture changes and it becomes more smooth and pliable. So now we need to make balls from this. So you can make them as big or as small as you like, but you don't want them too big because you've got to roll this out very thin. So I'm just gonna make them slightly bigger than roti balls. So I've ended up with eight balls here. Before I start rolling my puris, I'm going to turn on the heat for my oil on a medium heat, the number five. 
Now before I start rolling, I'm going to add a drop of oil to my countertop. And I did clean my countertop before I started. And I'm going to also add a drop of oil to my rolling pin here. And just rub it in. This is to make sure that it doesn't stick. And the pile of oil that I have here is just to take a little bit and grease my countertop. So I'm going to take one ball, flatten it, and then start rolling and make it as thin as I can. So this is just under a millimeter thick. It's actually quite thin. And the next thing to do is to get your fork and prick away. Then I'm going to use my shape and we're just going to cut the circles out. You might say I'm cheating, but this is definitely a lot quicker. Then I'm just going to remove the outside and pick up the puddies. Now, as my oil is not quite ready, I'm just going to move the little booties to the side and I'm going to roll another one. And this little piece here, I'm just going to use this to check and see if the oil is hot enough. So I'm just going to check my oil and that is good. So I'm going to start adding my booties. And some of mine are rising and you don't actually want them to rise so I'm going to try and prick the future ones that I make a little bit more. Once they fry for about 30 seconds to a minute then go ahead and flip them over. So you want to make sure that the bubbles are reduced a lot before you take them out. And that'll take about a minute, a minute and a half. So these look good and I'm going to remove them to my paper towel. And then we're just going to add some more. Now when you're frying, the heat definitely makes a difference, so make sure you don't have the heat on too high. I did actually end up turning my heat down very slightly because I couldn't keep up and I didn't want the booties to burn, but it does help them become more crispy as well. And with these scraps, you just need to roll them into a ball and make more booties. And to store the booty, just put them in an airtight container or a jar like this so it's ready whenever you want to eat it. And there you have it. The booties are ready for any type of chat that you want to use them for or even just to snack on. And this kind of booty you can't buy in the store. So definitely try out this recipe. And in the near future, I will be doing some videos on making charts and bail and all kinds of things. So definitely stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel. I'll see you all soon for some more cooking inspiration. Mm. So good.